Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got gun. Whoa done <laughs> recapping the Meyer LPGA Classic and now we're going to be recapping recent WNBA games in a show last week we did the same thing cover recent WNBA games and we are basically taking where we left off pretty much so we're going to talk about the games from Wednesday June 12th to Sunday June 16th which was yesterday and if you guys are enjoying this type of segment leave a comment and let us know so we can maybe continue doing some recap of WNBA games because I do enjoy talking about them, obviously. (laughs) Okay, so starting with the June 12th games, the Connecticut Sun and Chicago Sky went head-to-head. Here we go. Okay, so the Sun came on top, not shockingly, at 83-75. to Alyssa Thomas scored 10 of her 20 points in the fourth quarter, and Breonna Jones scored 14 of her 18th in the first half. Connecticut opened the fourth quarter on a 10-3 run, started by Tiffany Mitchell's steal and fast break layup. Thomas also had a steal and transition basket to make it 68-55. Chicago guard Diamond DeShields made a three-pointer with 28.9 seconds left to pull within 79-75, so it got really close by then. But Dewana Bonner sealed it with a two free throws at the other end. Bonner finished with 16 points and 8 rebounds. And Taisha Harris had 13 points and 7 assists for Connecticut. Thomas also had 6 of the Suns' 13 steals, which is really impressive. So rookie Angel Reese, she had a season-high 20 points and 10 rebounds for her fourth straight game with a double-double for Chicago. She really is showing her star power there. She was 8 of 10 from the field to set another season-high for makes. Camila Cardoso, Shenandy Carter, and Marina Mabre each scored 10 for the Sky. They did great as well, but I will say that Reese was a standout player for the Sky. And that's not being biased because, of course, I am paying a lot of attention to her because she is Angel Reese. But um, I did feel like she just stood out in general. Also on the 13th, the Indiana Fever beat the Atlanta Dream 91-84. Fever's total points marked a season high in points scored in a game in 2024. Four Fever players scored in double figures, led by center Alia Boston's 27 points, season high 13 rebound double-double, which marked her third double-double of the season. Boston's 27 points tied a career high in scoring, and her 17 points in the first half tied a career high in points scored in either half of a regular season game. Fever guard Kelsey Mitchell followed with a season-high 24-point performance, two rebounds, two assists, and two steals to go along with a three-point field goal at the end of the first half to give Indiana its largest halftime lead this season, 59-44. This is one of Kaylin Clark's lower-scoring games, only having seven points, which really shocks me. I don't know how that, like, happened. But, I mean, she still did well in other areas with four rebounds, six assists, and two blocks. Also on Thursday, the Seattle Storm beat the Dallas Wings 92-84. to This marks the Wings' sixth consecutive loss. The Storm scored 27 points off of Dallas' 19 turnovers, so it was overall a very rough game for the Wings. Skylar Diggins-Smith scored 21 points, and Jewel Lloyd added 19. Also, Easy McBoogor recorded her fourth double-double of the season with 10 points and 10 rebounds for Seattle. She also had two blocks to extend her streak of games with two-plus blocks to 13 straight, the seventh longest in WNBA history. On a brighter side for the Queens, Ariga Egamboale scored 24 points to extend her WNBA record to 11 consecutive games with at least 20 points to start the season. She's led Dallas in scoring in every game this season, and that is, like, not shocking <laughs> at all she is i've mentioned this many times but she's one of my favorite players in the wnba i'm just like really shocked that the wings keep losing so terribly um it's just not been going so good for them right now anyway the last game on thursday was the las vegas aces v phoenix mercury and the aces won the game 103 to 99 this was a very high scoring game as you can see if you like high scoring games go check this game out Jackie Young scored 21 of her career-high 34 points in the second quarter, and Asia Wilson had 32 points and 15 rebounds. This game ended the Aces' three-game skid. Young and Wilson became the third duo in franchise history to each score 30-plus points in a game. Wilson scored 25-plus points for the eighth straight game to pass Tina Charles, WNBA record of seven. For the Mercury, Brittany Griner had 25 points and 9 rebounds, Diana Tarisi had added 22 points, and Kalea Copper scored 18. Las Vegas scored a season-low 12 points in the first quarter before erupting with 42 in the second, behind 10 for 10 shooting from three-point range for a 54-51 to 51 halftime lead. The way that they were able to get back up there gave me a lot of hope for them. 
but don't worry we'll be talking about them later in the segment so young then scored five three pointers in the second the 21 points was the most in any quarter in young's career wilson who scored 10 of las vegas's 12 first quarter points and kelsey plum each made a three-pointer back-to-back possessions to give las vegas its first lead alicia clark made a three-pointer from the corner with two minutes 12 seconds remaining to give las vegas a 95 to 91 lead she had two free throws on the next possession and young made a 99 to 95 on a jumper from the free throw line with 46.3 seconds left then on Friday, June 14th, the Washington Mystics and the Chicago Sky had a super close game, ending an 83-81 victory for the Mystics. Ariel Atkins scored a season-high 29 points on 9 of 3 shooting. Julie Van Lue hit a 3-pointer with 2 minutes 49 seconds to play that ended a scoring drought of 5-plus minutes for the Mystics and stretched their lead to 79-71. to Lindsay Allen answered with a layup. Carter at Kennedy Carter added a three-point play, and Angel Reese was fouled as she made a layup and hit the M1 free throw to cap an 8-1 spurt and trim Chicago's deficit to 81-79 to with uh, one minute, 12 seconds left. Atkins responded with two free throws before Allen made a driving layup that made it a one-possession game with 50 seconds to go. The teams exchanged empty possessions before Allen missed a potential winning corner, three-point shot in the closing seconds. Stephanie Dawson of the Mystics fouled out when she died for the loose ball with 0.2 seconds left. I have not talked about her much in my channels whenever I talk about the WNBA, but she always sneaks in there with certain things, like <laughs> fouling out. I don't know. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, Marina Bobre, who went into the game shooting 83% from the line this season, missed the free throws, and the Mystics held on. I think that gave the Mystics a lot of confidence, to be honest, like to get back out there. Rookie Eli Edwards fouled out with 16 points on 6 of 7 shooting. This really made me upset because I wanted to see her play more. And the Sky now have lost three games in a row and five of their last six. Carter led Chicago with 16 points and Reese had 10 points and 14 rebounds. The rookie's fifth consecutive double-double. I'm telling you, like, Reese is really, really performing well. Also on Friday, the Minnesota Lynx beat the Los Angeles Sparks 81 to 76. If you were a huge Sparks fan, you were going to be upset by how the Sparks have been doing. The Lynx now have won three consecutive games in six of their last seven. In this game, Nafisa Collier scored 30 points to go with a career-high eight steals, and Courtney Williams had 15 points and 10 assists for her first double-double of the season. Williams also... Oop, Williams also finished with eight rebounds and four steals. Alana Smith scored 12 points, and Bridget Carlton added 11 for Minnesota. Rookie Rakia Jackson had her first career double-double, finishing with 19 points and 10 rebounds to lead the Sparks. Jerika Hampy, who signed a one-year contract extension with Los Angeles on Thursday, added 16 points and 11 rebounds. R. McDonald scored 14 with 7 assists. On Saturday, June 15th, the Sun crushed the Wings 85-67. to Rachel Bahan scored 16 points to lead five Connecticut players to... Um, wow, I just like my to yeah she wait i think that's like all i was meaning to say she scored 16 what did i just say my blame my blame wow i'm like losing it it's monday guys she scored 16 points to lead five united players in double figures yes I think that's what I was trying to say. Anyway, Jonah Carrington scored 14 points. Al Alyssa Thomas had 13 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. And Brianna Jones scored 12 for Connecticut. The Sun jumped to a 10-0 lead and never trailed. The Wings went nearly 4.5 minutes without a field goal to close the third quarter as the Sun stretched their lead to 22 points going into the fourth. Tara McCowan had 16 points and 10 rebounds, and Maddie Sergis also scored 16 for the Wings. Ugin Boale finished with 11 points on 2 of 15 shooting. Dallas made 1 of 16 shots from 3-point range, which was a 6.3% shooting average. Mm, that is, mm, I'm like, so, like, I am like not doing well with that information. I, mm, 
I'm very disappointed by how they're they're doing right now because I am a huge Wings fan. Um, but just like hearing that like 6.3% shooting average, like three point, like that's crazy. Like that's insane. Now the Wings have lost seven games in a row. They are not looking too hot right now. <laughs> the second game on Saturday was a New York Liberty v Aces game, and this game was a fun one to watch. <laughs> During the preseason, I was just gathering my thoughts before the season would take off, and I predicted that we would see the Liberty and the Aces again in the finals. But looking at how the season is going, I feel like that might not be the case anymore, to be honest. So it was really interesting to watch these two teams go head to head in the middle of the season. Liberty ended up winning the game 92-82. John Cole Jones scored a career-high 34 points, and Brianna Stewart and Sabrina Ionescu each had a double-double. Ionescu finished with 15 points and 12 assists, and Stewart added 14 points and 12 rebounds for New York. Benita Laney Hamilton had 12 points and 7 rebounds. Kelsey Plum hit a floater that gave the Aces a 53-47 lead with 6 minutes, 33 seconds left in the quarter. They then went scoreless for nearly five minutes. Kate Martin hit a three-pointer to break the Las Vegas scoring draw, and Asia Wilson followed with a bucket in the lane. That cut the deficit to 61-258, but the Aces literally got no closer. Plum the Las Vegas with 22 points, and Wilson finished with 21 points and nine rebounds. Alicia Clark added 13 points. Jackie Young had um, 10 points and six assists, and Kaya Stokes grabbed 12 rebounds. After this game, New York won its eighth straight game while Las Vegas has lost four of its last five games. I'm I'm really hoping that the A's are able to make a comeback because they are not looking too hot right now at all. Um, so yeah, I've been a bit disappointed with them right now. I don't know. I had a lot of confidence with them going into the um, season and I don't really understand like how like things have just... I don't know. Y'all leave your opinions in the comments and everything on what you guys think is the problem with the Aces. I think I'm going to cover a segment talking about how they're kind of dropping from this top team to now not doing so hot. And like, I want to cover like why that's happening because I honestly don't understand why it is. And I'm trying to figure why it is. So I need to gather my thoughts on that before I speak upon it because... I'm lost for words. Okay, so the last game we're going to talk about is the game from Sunday. There are three games total Sunday, but we only have time for one game. So on Sunday, which is yesterday, the Father's Day, uh, happy Father's Day <laughs> to people out there. Um, the Fever beat the Sky 91 to 83. This was a great game to watch also because we got to see Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese go head to head again. And there was still that tension and rivalry between them. And every single time they go head to head, I feel like the game is super physical and competitive. Anyway, Clark and Eli Boston are finally getting in sync. And naturally, Indiana looks like it finally has a winning combination. Clark overcame yet another physically demanding challenge from Chicago by finishing with 23 points, 9 assists, and 8 rebounds, while Boston produced her third consecutive double-double. For Clark, it was her best day as a pro. She made 7 of 11 shots and 3 three-pointers. Boston had 19 points and 14 rebounds, while Kelsey Mitchell added 17 points and Alyssa Smith had 15. But just like the first contest two weeks ago, Clark took a hard shot that knocked her to the ground this time when college rival Angel Reese's right elbow hit Clark in the head. It was brutal. The difference this time, unlike the Carter play, was that the refs upgraded the foul to a flagrant one following a replay review, giving Clark two free throws and in Indiana the next position. I mean, possession. Reese disagreed with Side's assessment, complaining it was merely a basketball play. Regardless, this decision will only add fuel to a rapidly growing regional rivalry. On the other side, uh, Reese did have 11 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 assists, while Camila Cardoso had 10 points and 1 rebound. I thought it was interesting the refs upgraded the foul to a, f- or the play, or the interaction, encounter, to a flagrant foul. I think that avoided, like, all this, like, because I feel like as soon as that Carter thing happened, there were so many articles getting all about how Clark is being targeted, and I did cover multiple segments on how I think she is actually being targeted. And I feel like now that the refs have made a flagrant foul, they're kind of avoiding that whole issue a bit because it's like settling people down. It's like, okay, like this is a foul, and we're addressing that this is a foul. It's just a lot more responsible way to approach the situation, I feel like. And I'm, I'm very happy that they reviewed it and said it was a foul because it was a foul. Um, and a flagrant foul wasn't like just like a foul. So it makes me very happy. But 
I don't know. I just feel like a lot of things could have been avoided if something like that was taken with the Carter foul as well. Um, but with the Indiana Fever, I did want to mention something. We're going to go back to their um, games in the beginning that I talked about um, with the Atlanta Dream. I think it's very impressive that they did beat the Atlanta Dream this much. Um, just because... Um, maybe that's not a good comparison now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I just feel like the Indiana Fever did not do so well in the beginning of the season. And to see that they are getting that um, groove back, beating the Atlanta Fever, and then now beating the Chicago Sky again, not just once, they're beating them again. Um, I think it shows that they do have that winning ability, um, and they have that competitive spirit and an advantage in their team. I think their team is getting more together as a team, because in the beginning, I did feel like they were playing like individually, at least. like I feel like they weren't much of a team, if that makes sense. So I think that that's just showing that they're able to play more like a team. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but it's making sense in my head, so I'm going to go with it. Um, okay, we're now going to move on to the next segment, where we're going to talk about the U.S. I mean, Olympic trials, some updates so far. Before we get into that, we're going to be taking a very short break, so I will see you guys very soon. <laughs> 